Welcome to the XR Producer Beginner Course by Yahoo. I'm Henry Kaiser, and in this first video, we're going to be talking about how do you get started in thinking in XR. First, I'll just introduce myself. Um, I'm Henry Kaiser. I'm the Director of XR Editorial at Yahoo. Really, my focus has been on, uh, in the last few years, bringing this new medium to journalists. Uh, you may not be a journalist watching this. You may be some other form of storyteller, that's fine. The hope here is that you can take from this training the ability to make your first augmented reality project. And from there, we'll be able to start to understand how can you use this for the form of storytelling that you are interested in um, at a fairly accessible level. There are a lot of tutorials out there on the internet. We hope that this could be the one that's your very first one just to get you started, to introduce you to some key terms, to help you create your first project, and then to apply that to all of your ambitions going forward. Um, we will cover a lot of things. We will not cover remotely everything, but we will try to pass along to you more tutorials that you can watch then to pick up more advanced skills as you go. Um, that said, the big thesis for this training is that you do not need to be some super advanced whiz in order to make XR. You do not need to be a studied theoretical futurist or some really advanced creative technologist who knows all the art and all the engineering. You do not need to be an experienced 3D artist, and you also do not really need to be some sort of, um, you know, advanced engineering uh, game engine specialist, or even someone who's focused on like 3D capture people with high-tech laser scanners and things in the field. You just need to be interested in content creation and open to picking up a couple new skills that may be really daunting to you at first. But we're going to help try to walk you through some of the basics of those so that you can just get past that first set of hurdles and understand that I can do this. This training does assume that this is your very first 3D project with no previous experience. I want you to know coming into this that if this is your very first one, while you may still struggle, you may still have to rewind a few times, I'm trying to go slowly to help make sure you as a beginner are getting some of the key things you need. You may not feel confident at the end of this training, but you should feel less concerned about where you are at because you have picked up some things along the way. If you're coming into this training with a lot of experience or even some experience already under your belt, some of these things may be um, a bit of a, a rehash for you, things that you already know. I hope you go ahead and you watch through and share with us what new things you might have picked up along the way as well. This beginner training video series is going to be in nine parts. Uh, the first six are really focused on how can you create content from libraries and tell a story with 3D art other people have already made assembling that into a new story, and then providing context on top of it. So it's not just the 3D models, but you've given someone who's looking at this composition a bit of a nudge and a bit of understanding about what is the story you're trying to tell. Um, after we finish those first six, we'll talk about what do you need to do a bit to go beyond the library. Um, so that may include improving the uh, performance of some of the 3D models that are actually in the uh, piece that you've downloaded or the various 3D assets that we'll have downloaded. Um, it may mean 3D scanning your own 3D models, and we'll do an introduction to photogrammetry at that stage. And then also we'll talk about some more advanced XR technologies just to wrap it all up that you might be interested in going forward. Uh, and we will kind of show you the, uh, the beginnings of where you might look for your next steps as you improve on your XR career. So the first six, we'll just talk about how to think about XR. We'll go through the, the early steps that we do as XR journalists. So I have a new project. I have a piece that's going out to, to tomorrow. I need to create an XR really, really quickly. Um, and then we'll talk about finding 3D models and libraries, introduce you to a 3D editing software called Blender. Um, and that can be really frightening for some people on their first time into XR, but we're going to walk you through the, just the most basic steps so that you can feel a bit more agency when you look at that, that software. And then, of course, we just had talk about how do you add context beyond the 3D models, packaging it up uh, using Sketchfab as our hosting software uh, or our hosting platform. Uh, and then, as I said, the following videos will really go into some more advanced details from there. The four pillars of this particular training program are really, we want to demystify some of the terminology that's in the industry. Um, there is a lot of jargon. So we're going to try to use some of those, but we're going to try to use them sparingly and introduce what they mean. Uh, we're also going to introduce you to 3D software. If you've never worked with it before, assuming that you haven't, um, it can be fairly frightening if you've only ever worked with 2D software before. Um, and so we'll try to just step you through that very, very slowly. 
We will also uh, really be focused on the concept of you downloading the tools we're using, downloading the assets that we're using, and having you follow along with those uh, trainings that we're doing as we go. And this way, you may need to pause the video periodically, do a few steps, unpause, watch the next segment. That's exactly how you're expected to engage with this tutorial. Additionally, if there are things that are more advanced, but we have to touch on them to some extent, we will mention it and we will provide links that you can go deeper with in the video description or accompanying uh, documents that will be packaged with the distribution of this video series. Now, with this training, since we're assuming this is, again, your very first production, you may already be asking yourself, what is XR? And that's a legitimately great question. Uh, but to get there, let's start out by saying, what is virtual reality? Virtual reality is fundamentally about putting a user in an experience that is distinctly different than their real world environment, than their physical environment that they're in. Uh, virtual reality is predominantly a headset worn technology. You put on this device and you are transported to another place. Differently is augmented reality. Augmented reality is about intersecting 3D elements into the user's physical environment. Um, and so there are a lot of different approaches to how that is done as well. Mostly it is a, a mobile technology today, but a lot of big players have been focused on making this a headset based technology that's been around for a number of years as well. And we understand that in the next few years, it's very likely that this augmented reality technology will become kind of a peripheral glasses worn technology, similar to how we wear smartwatches and Bluetooth headsets. There's likely an opportunity where people will be wearing these glasses as they go about their daily life as well, providing uh, 3D assets and 3D elements into their real world to help improve how they interact with the real world, but also to provide them stories, just as well as you know, people are watching stories on their mobile devices today, they may also then be watching augmented reality stories through their glasses in the near future. One complication to the augmented reality terminology is that Microsoft has consistently called this mixed reality, um, and the reason that's a complication is mixed reality has been a term in the industry for a number of years as well. A lot of that industry has rebranded itself broadcast AR. So if you hear the term mixed reality or you hear the term broadcast AR, those are synonyms of each other. Uh, but broadcast AR or mixed reality is fundamentally videos that are used uh, to intersect live performances, live people, talent on screen, storytellers and virtual environments, be that a virtual set, or it could also be a video game of some sort where you're seeing a person running through a video game in this video. Uh, but you should understand that mixed reality and broadcast they are, are fundamentally production techniques that are used to create a video. And they're not really something that's interactive to the user in the same way that virtual reality or augmented reality are done. So back to that big question, what is XR? Uh, we talk about VR and AR and MR. Well, XR is the catch-all term, generally. It includes virtual reality and augmented reality and mixed reality. And it also includes a lot of other immersive technologies that have been coming around in the last few years. Uh, you know, there was a big push in 2016 around the term VR. 2017 was AR. 2018, we had some mixers of AR and MR and things. But we also then served XR. And that was people trying to lump them together to say the extended reality. Um, additionally, some people like to say it is X as a placeholder for all those other letters that we listed. That's fine. It's nice that you would know that or you get to hear some of these terms and these philosophies. But the main thing is when we talk about XR, we're talking about preparing you for working with all of these various 3D immersive formats. So what are some of the other technologies that are included in XR? Uh, there was some debate whether 360 video and 360 photos were part of virtual reality in the early days of VR. That aside, it is absolutely part of the XR landscape because it does present itself in a way where users are placed immersively in order to view the sensation of those uh, media productions, those media, those media assets. Um, another thing is holograms. Holograms are often tied to the volumetric capture stage industry, which we'll just barely touch on in an upcoming episode. But that is about how do you record someone three-dimensionally so that you can look at them and their performances and who they are from all sides in a playback file. That technology has progressed a lot in the last few years, and we're going to see more and more of that. Um, another technology is spatial sound. Many of us are familiar with stereo, the idea of left and right audio. 
Um, some of us are familiar with surround sound, the idea that you may have multiple speakers that when they're arrayed in a certain way, can make it feel like sound is in front of you to the left, in front of you to the right, behind you, and so forth. Um, but then spatial sound is running on the same left and right audio as speakers, but it uses a computer to know what direction you are facing, what, uh, where are you positioned, if you can actually move through some of the stories. And that way you can get closer to the sound, you can turn and feel the sound now in front of you that was originally sound from the left or from the right. Um, and it is just using a computer to detect what should the sound sound like based on the sources of the sound three-dimensionally and where you've decided to look and position yourself. It's a brainchild of the video game industry and it's done a lot now to improve storytelling in XR. One of the last ones we'll touch on just really quickly is haptics. Haptics are part of the idea of um, you can immerse someone in the story more if they include the sense of touch. And so this glove is a very advanced form. This is the idea that maybe someone could reach out and wrap their fingers around a ball that's not physically there, but digitally it tells the glove you should stop each part of the fingers at these positions so that they can feel the ball or they can poke the ball and feel it kind of press back a little bit potentially. Um, but really simple forms of haptics might even be the keyboard on your phone tapping back as you tap against the keys, the vibration on a video game controller. All of this is part of the XR landscape. Um, haptics are a little... Uh, Haptics are not progressed as much, say, as some of the headsets are, but this is something you can probably to see more and more of in the next 10 to 15 years. With that introduction to the XR technologies out of the way, um, it's really important to let you know that this training will be focused on XR as it relates to 3D model-based storytelling, and that it requires no extra equipment besides a computer and a smartphone. If you have those two things, you'll be able to follow along with this training from start to finish. So, Let's talk about how we use it as a storytelling mechanism. Augmented reality for me is a main method of telling a slice of a story in your environment. I say a slice of a story because if you're trying to tell the entire story from beginning to end, all of the context someone needs to know, introducing all of the various characters, that can be a really large production. And in many cases, that may be even cost prohibitive, time prohibitive, technology and platform prohibitive for what you're trying to do. What I encourage you to do as both a beginner or someone who's going to be working in the mass media industry and maybe constrained to tight budgets and quick timelines is to focus on the part of the story that is best told by the immersive elements of AR or XR. And so really figuring out what can I tell using video? What can I tell using audio? What can I tell using written article? And then what do I want people to explore and interact with using AR? Similarly, there is then the use of AR for VR. VR, as I said before, is fundamentally a headset-based technology, but many people do not have those headsets still. And so if you want to tell something that's more immersive, it's not just about placing an object in the user space, but kind of transporting them into a full scene, into uh, a fully enclosed environment, perhaps. Um, in those cases, you can build out that fully rich environment and still run it on the AR technology running on a smartphone uh, just by making not say an object, but a fully enclosed space that you've designed for someone to be inside of. So in this case, we tend to call that AR or VR. The next thing we're gonna do really is talk about the layers of XR. We're gonna start getting into now, how do I think about it in a way that I can begin to execute on a project? How do I take a vision you might have in your head and then break it down into what you need to do to execute on that vision? What we tend to do is we break it down into five fundamental layers of an XR scene composition. The five layers that we present are environment, object, subject, sound, and sky. Sky is really used for VR, AR for VR, 360 video, but we're going to focus on the first four predominantly. Environment is about the unifying element that holds the story together, that holds the space of the story together. This could be a physical, literal environment. It could be a 3D bedroom. It could be a 3D park. It could be a showroom floor. It could also be a storytelling environment. So this could be a large chart that you place on the ground or a large map. It could be, if you're working on a timeline, a physicalized timeline that's going through the space, connecting the various other elements that are along the timeline. So the environment is not necessarily always a literal environment is more often than not just the common unifying element that connects the furthest extremities 
of the object and the subjects of your story. Jumping over object for a second, let's talk about subject. Subject is fundamentally the people of the story. It's the thing that people are supposed to look at, connect with. It's this thing that is telling the story. Um, it, it is maybe the voice of it. It may be the key character we're trying to connect with. Um, and subject is something that unfortunately gets left out from a lot of XR productions because it can be really difficult to add in a person seemingly. I say that because it used to be that, oh, well, how do I add a person to my story? Well, I need a hologram. I need to take them to a volumetric capture stage and get them scanned, make them into a 3D character. But that can be really, really costly. So sometimes you might just take it back a step and say, I'll 3D scan them. We'll use photogrammetry, a technology you'll learn about more in episode eight. And we'll go ahead and we'll include them as a 3D still. So you can still kind of look at them. You can see them in their space. But uh, I don't need to spend a large production on volumetric capture in that case. Um, that could still be difficult. We now even improve to say, what if you just make a cutout of the person from a 2D image? Or why don't you even include a 2D image of them into the story? We'll show you some compositions coming up, and those will really lay out for you, oh, I do not need to... 3D scan every single person who appears in a story that I'm working on, but I should include a subject so that there is someone my, my audience can relate to. Objects in between those two are the various pieces of set dressing, other key things that are necessary for the storytelling. These are the other 3D components that will go into your story to help set the space, set the stage, um, and let people really interact and engage and feel immersed in the, uh, in the overall package. Sound cannot be uh, overstated and how important it can be for your storytelling. This training is not going to go into telling you a lot about how to produce sound. There are a lot of great tutorials out there. Um, and even when in a pinch, you can just use the video capture feature of your smartphone and give yourself a voiceover. Use a voice recorder to record some sound. Um, but sound is a main, can be a really powerful storytelling component because people can listen in a space and hear the voice of your subject. They can hear the sound of your environment. They can, it can be used to notify someone that they've interacted in the way that you want them to. It can also be used to nudge people as a, you know, if, if you've ever been on a museum tour, the tour guide's telling you, look behind this or see the cracks in this area here. Look, looking behind it, you will find. And those kinds of key terminologies can be used to really drive the user's engagement and help them understand what they should do in order to consume this piece of media. Sky is really fundamentally about if you have a virtual reality space and you need to have something beyond your near ground environment to make it feel more immersive, you may surround your entire space with what we call a sky box or a sky dome or a 360 image, which fundamentally means that when I look beyond the the 3D wall I have five feet away, and I look out the window, beyond the window there might be some streets, there might be some sky up in the sky, there might be something else beyond there, so that as I look into the distance, I'm not looking into a void, or if you're an AR, I'm not now looking out my window and seeing my own kitchen. So those are the five fundamental layers that we use to break down our scenes. So with those layers in mind, let's talk about how you break a vision into layers. So here's a basic story. A couple who love camping have been camping in their living room during the pandemic. What might the layers be there? You can pause for a second and go ahead and think about it. So for us, the layers that we chose were really, well, let's have a representation of their living room. So looking at some photos, we can build a quick 3D model of some of that space. Let's really make sure we focus on the tent. That's a really strange object to see in the living room, and it becomes our primary object for storytelling. The subject, the person who's actually going ahead, and they are the one telling their story about them and their partner camping in the living room. We had them photogrammetry scan themselves. And then we also include 2D images of them in the sleeping bag with their dog or of them working at their uh, table with a tent over their shoulder as they work during the day before they resume their, camp their camping activities at night. And then we include audio to help them tell their story, provide great quotes, and really set the stage for how when you're standing inside of now their living room with the tent, with them there, you get to hear their voice and really get a sense of what the space is like. Uh, and so here you can see the full composition and you can find this experience at this link. Another potential story, 
be at the inauguration. It was a really weird year in 2020 in that, or 2021 in that we couldn't be at the inauguration due to uh, the COVID-19 virus. And so what we did was we designed out some of that space so that you could stand on the dais with the president during the swearing in. We told a story about the transition of power and the layers we used then were the environment being the capital, some key objects being the lectern that the president provides their speech from, cutouts of multiple generations of presidents during their swearing-ins and during their speeches, and voiceovers of the inauguration of speeches and other reporters telling the story about the transition of power. You can also see this composition kind of set up here. There was a lot of animation that went into this so that you could tell a story over time. We won't be drilling into animation very much during this particular training program, but you can learn more about that looking at various YouTube tutorials. Now that you've got a sense of what you break, might break a story down into, let's talk about the verbs of XR. What you are doing versus what your user is doing. We're going to break these down into two groups. In our case, the verbs will come in creator control verbs, the verbs you have as a storyteller to put together your story, and the verbs that your user, your audience has in the agency of how they consume that story. So an example being, if you are writing an article, fundamentally you are writing and they are reading, you have some things you can do, like put in different breaks, you go ahead and set up links, bullet out various lists, and of course all the punctuation that you can execute to help someone understand how to work their way through your story. But fundamentally, they are just scrolling and maybe they are clicking. That is the entire agency someone has on working with a written article. With a video, similarly, you are fundamentally recording and they are fundamentally watching. You may have a whole series of verbs that you use in the process of setting up your compositions, of going ahead and uh, moving the camera around or cutting up the final video file as you prepare the production. But uh, your user fundamentally is they are playing, they are pausing, maybe they're rewinding, but that's the entirety of how they can engage with that format that you have so much control over and they have so little. The reason we bring this up is because as you go into XR, you'll see that the relationship is fundamentally going to flip. While you are then guiding them through a 3D space, they are exploring. They have a lot more they can be doing. They can potentially move your objects around. They might rotate your objects. In many cases, they can rescale the objects to different sizes. Um, they can also be moving themselves around fundamentally. So they are uh, both approaching your subject. They might be avoiding certain assets. They're looking wherever they want to look, inside of, around, between, underneath. Um, and then they also may be interacting with it in a way where they are tapping things, they're taking photos of things, they're sharing videos of things. And they have lots of agency over what they decide to look at and what they happen to miss. So as you as a guide in that case are really gonna be focused on how do I set up a strong composition? The key verbs we use there are position, rotation, and scale. How do I position my object? How do I rotate it in the right way so that the, the entire scene feels right? How do I then compose the various 3D objects in the space relative to each other and relative to my user? so that they see the scene, how I want them to see it. They maybe understand how I've, I've enticed them to go this direction. I've surrounded them so that they kind of understand where they could look, where they probably shouldn't look. Um, I'm repelling them from the areas where maybe I don't have anything interesting. Um, and if you bring in animation, maybe you're revealing new things or removing things, you're really just striking a balance between comfort and discomfort um, so that they are comfortable doing the stuff that you really want them to do. Um, maybe they're uncomfortable doing the things you don't want them to do, or if that is a goal is to make them feel comfortable or uncomfortable in a certain story, you're trying to nail that balance. It is a learned skill. It is not one that can be taught so much as it's, you get with experience, but the number one way you get there is not to just build it on your computer and see if it's working. You have to build it, deploy it all the way to August reality, put it in the hands of new users and see how do they react? You will come in with too many assumptions if you're not really often showing it to new people. This is a new technology. It's a new storytelling format. You probably haven't been exposed to it for very long, especially if you're watching this since your first project. For your first assignment at the end of this video, your homework is to think of a recent media story that you may have been engaging with. It could have been a news story, a sports story, um, just something that was happening that you were kind of consuming the story around and you understood. And what I want you to do is to think, 
what is a single XR scene that would have enhanced some of the coverage around this piece? Um, I want you to then go ahead and think of that scene and with your vision, break it down to this, the layers we talked about, subject, object, environment, and sound. And from there, I also want you to think, well, how would you want to lay this out so that the user uh, explores what you want them to explore without taking the control away from it? This is not a video. You can't force them to look where you want them to look. So think, well, how would I set this up so that they come into my story and they get what I want them to get from it? That's your homework for this first episode. I'm Henry Kaiser. I look forward to seeing you in episode two.